In a recent video, we discussed the Chi-Ri, which was essentially the final tank built by the Japanese during the Second World War. However, that project was never fully completed due to the war's end cutting development short. The same cannot be said for the predecessor of that design, the chi To. Sit back and relax as we take another trip to the land of the rising sun. Throughout history, there have been countless tanks, all designed to kill. But not all have been a success. What happened to the ones that never made it, and why did they fail? My name is Konovar. Join me as we journey through time, uncovering failed projects and forgotten creations in Cursed by Design. This video has been sponsored by NordVPN. If you've been watching YouTube at any point in the last few years, there's no doubt you've heard about NordVPN. If you somehow missed out on what they are though, let me quickly explain. As you all should know, using the internet without the protection of a VPN is like driving an open top tank through an urban environment. You might feel safe and comfortable being in an armored shell, but sneaky saboteurs could be lurking around any corner or on the rooftops ready to drop Molotov cocktails into your lap. However, using the web with NordVPN changes this scenario by shielding you from attack like adding a roof to your tank. With over 5,200 servers in 59 countries, Nord also offers the fastest speeds of any VPN confirmed by speed tests, meaning it won't make your browsing feel like driving the T95. Not only that, but you can use NordVPN to change your virtual location with just another click to access streaming content that might not be available in your region. So don't spend another day hoping a hacker doesn't pick you as a target and protect your browsing with NordVPN using the link in the description. Plus, if you use my code Cone of Arc, you'll get a special gift along with a massive discount. Thanks so much to them for sponsoring the video, now let's get into today's topic. Japan's armored vehicles had always had issues engaging with enemy tanks due to poor armor and armament. Although the issue plagued them through the entire war, the majority of their early conquests were still successful due to many areas around and within China either not needing tanks in large numbers or having inferior enemy forces who lacked many tanks or modern anti-tank weaponry. However, it was still clear to the Japanese that better designs would be necessary against the increasing capabilities of their major enemies such as the US and Soviet Union. This was made abundantly clear when their tanks were decimated during the fighting in Manchuria against the Soviet forces in 1939, forcing a complete rethink of their entire armored doctrine as well as spurring radical upgrades to their tank force. The first tank to see these changes was the upgraded version of the Type 97 Chiha known as the Chiha Kai. This chassis would also serve as the base for many of Japan's tanks during the war. If you want to learn more about the Chiha's development and usage, check out the link in the corner to the video done by my friend Tank Party which I helped out on. The Chiha Kai performed acceptably against US tanks in the Philippines, helping to complete the conquest of that territory. However, by this point, tank technology was beginning to advance at a more rapid pace, quickly leaving Japan's designs behind. Attempts were made to learn from their German allies about European tank designs, but the information transfer was incredibly slow and was insufficient to keep them up to date on the technological advancement. Even the purchase of a pair of Panzer III's armed with the 50mm and short 75mm in 1943 did little to help as they did not arrive until they were already obsolete. By this point, a new and deadly foe was making its way closer and closer to the Japanese homeland on both the Pacific Islands and later with Indian and Chinese forces. Boasting armor nearly twice and even three times as thick as the frontal armor of their current tanks, the M4 Sherman with its short 75mm became the primary target of Japan's next tank projects. As I mentioned earlier, the Chiha chassis was still being used at this point as a basis for the tanks with the Chi Nu still using a modified version of the hull. This tank would see limited production with around 144 completed by the end of the war, although none of these left the home island, being reserved for the final line of defense. Still though, this tank was only a stopgap solution to combat the threat of the Sherman until a better tank could be produced. This is when today's real topic finally enters the stage. In 1943, work would begin on an all-new tank from the ground up. Although it bore similarities to the previous Chiha in its overall layout, the tank was improved in every way. The only thing not changed were the components for the suspension system and the drive sprockets. These were all the same as the ones from the earlier Chiha, although it used two bell cranks rather than the one used for the Chiha. 
Given how late in the war this vehicle was designed, not a huge amount is known about it, but we do know the basics. For its hull and turret, the tank ranged from 12 to 75 millimeters of armor, putting it much closer to the Sherman in its protection. The 75 millimeter plates made up the turret front and hull front with a slight slope, which further increased protection. The sides were considerably thinner, but still featured 12 to 30 millimeters of armor, which was about the same as the Chi Nu, although it did not have as much of a slope. To propel this tank, which was by now approaching 30 tons, a much larger power plant was needed than the small 240 horsepower Mitsubishi engine used in the Chi Nu. Now, a 412 horsepower Mitsubishi AL Type 4 supercharged diesel would become the heart of this Japanese Sherman. This gave the tank a top speed of around 45 km per hour or 28 miles per hour, and put it just shy of the Sherman's mobility with a power to weight ratio of 13.7 horsepower per ton. This would likely have meant the tank would have had reasonably good mobility. Of course, none of this would mean anything if the tank remained equipped with the weak firepower that plagued many Japanese tanks. Even the Chi Nu was just barely capable of engaging the Sherman frontally and would need to get close which put it well within the range of the M4's cannon. The Chi To, however, would feature a new and vastly improved 75mm. Originally, the tank was proposed with a high-velocity 57mm, which was supposedly fitted to one of the first prototypes before this was abandoned in favor of the experimental 75mm. Based on the Type 4 75mm anti-air gun, the Type 5 75mm featured increased velocity and penetrating power. Testing of the weapon against steel plates revealed the Type 1 armor-piercing round could defeat 140mm at 1000 meters. although bear in mind this was not rolled homogeneous armor, meaning the steel was far weaker. Likely against rolled armor like that of the Sherman, this gun would have been effective at ranges exceeding 1000 meters. although exact figures differ depending on the source. Regardless, we can say for certain that this would have been much more dangerous for the American crews than anything else the Japanese could field. Production of a prototype and another pre-production vehicle took place during 1944 with testing of the vehicles following. Steel shortages had caused many delays though, and the planned 25 units per month that Mitsubishi believed they could deliver was little more than a fantasy. Around this same time, focus was split from the Chi To, with work beginning on the similar but even more ambitious Chi Ri project. By the time that program was abandoned and efforts were redirected towards the Chi To, it was already too late, with no further units being produced as far as we know. One tank was said to have been dumped into Lake Hamana, with the Americans recovering it after the war. Rumors persist that a second still remains there to this day, however efforts to recover it in 2013 were unsuccessful, so this cannot be confirmed. The one recovered by the Americans eventually made its way to Aberdeen, where it, along with the Chi Ri, was assessed before eventually being scrapped. Another variant of the Chi To was discussed early in its development known as the Ka To. This would have been a tank destroyer equipped with a 105mm gun similar to the earlier Na To. Not much is known about this project, however, and it may have been based on the Chi Ri chassis. Likely we will never know, as this was never produced, and not much information remains. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you did enjoy the video. It's at this point, however, that I would like to take a moment to address the tragic loss of someone from within our community. We sadly lost a fellow content creator by the name of 2 and 900 to suicide on Wednesday the 21st of July 2021, immediately following the upload of the last video to his YouTube channel. As he was a fan of Japanese armor, I thought it would be fitting to dedicate this video to him as my way of honoring his memory and have decided to donate the entirety of the money I would have been receiving from the sponsorship to the GoFundMe set up by his brother. As I'm sure you can imagine, his family is struggling a lot with the immense pain this sort of thing causes, so I want to try and ensure that this isn't increased by financial hardships. If you can, I ask that you consider donating as well to help cover the funeral expenses, and I'll leave a link to the GoFundMe down below. Thank you all for watching, and to Nord for giving me the ability to donate to a worthy cause by supporting this video.